Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In this part, we'll take up some important examples of class mammalia. We have seen the general characteristic features also. We have also talked about the three groups, prototherians, metatherians and eutherians. Now here we will take examples which belong to all three groups. The first one is duck billed platypus. Its scientific name is ornithorhynchus. It is called duck-billed platypus because its snout is bill-like and which resembles the structure which is seen in case of ducks and so is the name. It is a prototherian. So two examples, first two examples we are taking from prototherians. So it is an egg-laying ma mammal, Ornithorhynchus it's, uh, is its name. It is found in Australia and Tasmania. It has webs, webbed feet because it is aquatic animal and its tail is also little flat because that structure also helps in uh, swimming. The second example again of prototheria is echidna which is commonly known as spiny ant eater. Its scientific name is tachyglossus. Echidna is also prototherian means it is showing all the characteristic features of prototheria. Egg laying mammal, memory glands are present but there are no teats or nipples. So the, the milk just oozes out and the young one which comes out of the egg will start to lick that milk. So those characteristic features are same. In case of echidna, the hair on dorsal side, that means on the back are modified into spines. So this is a unique feature which is found in echidna. So these two are the examples of prototheria, egg laying mammals. The next example is macropus. Macropus is kangaroo. This is an example of metatheria. These animals are known as pouched mammals and that pouch in which the young one stays is called the marsupium. The young one is very small and is premature and that is why it is known as memory fetus. It remains in that marsupium till it attains a size and it can survive on its own away from the parent. So uh, kangaroos are also found in Australia and Tasmania same region as of duck billed platypus. So this is one important example of metatheria. The next examples that means from the fourth example all examples are of eutheria. Eutherians are the true placental mammals. In this, we will take some groups and we will see some interesting uh, examples in those. The first is of rodents and we will talk about one more along with this. So this is the fourth category. The fifth category they are called lagomorphs. In rodents, we take the example of rats, mice. In case of lagomorphs, we take the example of rabbits, hair etc. 
So what is the basic difference? Both are very much similar but with few differences. In case of rodents, they have one pair of incisors in upper jaw and one pair in lower jaw. That means there are two incisors in upper jaw, two incisors in lower jaw. In case of legomorphs, there are two pairs of incisors in upper jaw and one pair in lower jaw. Rodents are also known as gnawing animals. They are gnawing animals. Gnawing basically means hitting teeth on something. The reason is their incisors, they grow continuously. So if they hit on some hard object or on lower teeth, the growth of those incisors can be restricted. So if there is a mouse or a rat, you will always find that they make some kind of a sound. That sound is of hitting the incisors on some hard object or on teeth itself. That process is known as gnawing. So they are called gnawing animals. And one thing which is special about these lagomorphs, like rabbit, they show coprophagy. That means they feed on their own fecal matter and the reason for that is that in them the cellulose digestion takes place in the cecum part. Cecum, after cecum there is only large intestine. So large intestine will absorb only water. That digested cellulose does not get absorbed and that is why that gets excreted. And that excreted digested cellulose is consumed by these animals and that is why they are called or they show coprophagy and they are called coprophagus. So that is why we talk about these two categories together that is rodents and lagomorphs. Now the next example is of pteropus that is commonly known as flying fox or bat. Flying fox or bats. These are nocturnal animals, flying mammals. Nocturnal flying mammals and in them there are wings present. They have wings. So flying mammals again a special feature and these bats they hang upside down. The next is Balenoptera. Balenoptera group includes whales. Whales are the largest mammals. They show all the characteristic features of mammals everything and there is one special thing like one common whale which is called baleen whale this is the common one they are filter feeders so what they do is they take large amount of water in their mouth in the buccal cavity and there is a baleen plate there is a net like thing in their throat all the water is pumped out and those tiny organisms like diatoms they get entangled in that net or that baleen plate and this is what they feed on and that is why they are monophyodonts. Monophyodonts means they get only one set of teeth in their lifetime and if these teeth they fall off they never regrow. So the thing is they don't actually need teeth. So even if they fall off it is not going to affect the whale. The next example is proboscida. In proboscida we take elephants. In elephants 
that long trunk that we see is the stretched or long upper lip and the teeth which are visible they are called tusks. So these tusks are modified upper incisors. Asian elephants and African elephants are different. In Asian elephants males have long tusks, females have highly reduced tusks and in case of African elephants which are much bigger as compared to Asian elephants, males have very long tusks and females do not have tusks. So African elephants only males have tusk whereas in case of Asian elephants both have males have long, longer or larger and the females have very very short. So trunk is upper lip and the tusks are modified upper incisors this is very important. Now let us come to another category that is carnivores. Carnivores we know they eat meat, they kill animals and for that they have large long canines. In this we would include cat family that is lions, tigers, leopards, dogs, foxes, bears. These are the animals which are considered as carnivores. Now coming to one more category, we can call them ungulates. Ungulates are animals which are having hooves. Ungulates are hooved animals. Like we have nails, these animals have hooves. And depending upon the number of digits which are functional, they can be of two categories that is artiodectyla and perisodectyla. Artiodectyla, artio means even and dectyl is for digits or toes and periso means odd and dectyla again means the digit or the toes. So artiodactyls they have even number of toes. They are also known as even toed animals and these are odd number of toes. In this we take the example of horse, rhino, zebra, Whereas in case of artiodactyla, we take the examples of cows, deers, camel, etc. So they are called ungulates because they have hooves, but number of toes would decide whether we place them in artiodactyla or uh, perisodactyla and the word is arterio, uh, arterio is even and periso means odd. So we can have this as a separate category of ungulates as hooved animals and this as 11 and this as the 12th category. So these are some important categories of class mammalia and we have uh, talked about some specific characteristic features. Now when we talk of rodents and legomorphs, we also come across a term which is called diastema. As we talked of carnivores, we said they have long, big, powerful, strong canines because they have to tear open the skin and eat the raw flesh. These rodents and legomorphs, they have incisors and incisors are biting. They do not eat meat, so the canines are absent. So there is a space between incisors and premolars. That space is known as diastema.
diastema is a space between incisors and premolars the space where normally canines are present so if canines are absent there is a gap there so we have discussed all the characteristic features of every class and all the phylums in kingdom animalia this was the last one we have taken all important examples of class mammalia